Okay, we're back here live in Oracle Open World. We're live in San Francisco, California for Oracle's big 60,000 plus uh, Oracle Open World event. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. And go to siliconangle.com for the reference point in tech innovation. Go to wikibon.org for free research. Gartner Group, IDC, they all charge for reports, not at Wikibon, it's all free, SiliconANGLE, all free content. Of course, this is theCUBE, where we go to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and uh, the big news here is Oracle Open World is pushing the cloud, they're pushing social, and the America's Cup race is going on, where Larry Ellison <laughs> is attending and blowing off the keynote <laughs> to attend the, the sailboat race. So let's hope that they can pull a comeback. It's been a great run, uh, Dave. Dave, they've uh, gone, they were down uh, eight to one, you know, literally, they had to call the race where they were actually about to lose the cup and had a chance to come back in and since run the table on the Kiwis. And so it's been a very interesting time. Um, other news uh, is going on in, around the web is uh, uh, obviously Amazon's announcing a new Kindle. That's going to change the content game. And all these trends point to one thing. The consumer is connected in the crowd. You got Twitter, you got Facebook, you have the social networks. Mobile apps are the key. Funding all that's going to be the cloud, it's going to be all the infrastructure, it's all under the hood. The little things matter. Fiber channel adapters, high speed connectivity between storage, compute, and networking. Software defined everything. Software defined networking, software defined storage, software defined compute. So Dave, that's kind of where we're, where we're seeing all the action here is, under the hood, there's a lot of action going on. That's enabling an entirely new breed of, of tech uh, user, an IT broker, Programmers, Rails, Python, a whole new computer science method of developing. We're watching it. The SaaS model, the PaaS model. Uh, what's your take yeah, on so it? Yeah, so John, you know, you mentioned under the hood, and uh, we're here in the QLogic booth. This is the third, now fourth year we've done Oracle Open World, uh, thanks to QLogic, who gives up a major portion of its booth so that the Cube can broadcast live from Open World. And when, it, when you talk about under the hood, QLogic is a company that, that makes the adapters, makes the technology, that brings the storage and the networking together that allows the bits to fly through the system and if anything goes wrong, allows systems to recover them. David Ard is here, he is the uh, OEM, uh, head of OEM marketing for QLogic. We have a demo here, we're going to talk about uh, Oracle Rack with Fabric Cash, a product that you guys announced uh, yes. recently. So, so, so tee up uh, what we're going to see here. Yeah, actually, uh, that's great. Thanks for the introduction, and, and, and thanks for having us back on the show. It's a great, great show for us. So, um, what we're talking about here today is a collaborative solution between Oracle and, uh, and QLogic, where we brought in the ability to really enhance the Oracle rack environment um, with the new, uh, new product that we've launched. It's called the, uh, the QLogic Fabric Cache Solution. And essentially, that solution gives customers, it's a unified solution that gives customers the ability to really be able to meet the growing demands of their business um, and, and continuing to, to, to keep up with the data needs that they have in that, in that environment using that caching capability. So, um, what we've got actually is, uh, you know, the Fabric Cache product is actually a product that is a fi fiber channel HBA, but it includes the uh, solid state disk technology in there, and it gives customers the ability to have a, uh, a, a clustered cache capability on the server side of their environment. Um, so that gives them a, a much better performance, so up to 82% performance uh, increase in their applications, uh, and it also gives them the ability to be able to reduce the latency on that back-end SAN interconnect, um, so it gives them the, the, essentially the opportunity to do more work, get more productivity out of that current infrastructure. Okay, great, so now the demo that you have teed up. Uh, yep. Uh, so let's, let's go right to the demo. Yep. So we'll, yeah. we'll switch over. I'm going to just tee it up again here quickly, just give you an idea of what sure. the, the configuration looks like. It's a, it's a four rack, uh, Oracle rack configuration. Every one of the nodes in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the cluster actually has a Fabric Cache HBA installed in that. What that actually creates is a, uh, a cluster of caching that gives customers the ability to be able to uh, take advantage of, of, of caching all of the hot data essentially on the server side. So if an I.O. request comes through, that, uh, that, that Fabric Cache card will actually go and look at the cache first transparently to the servers if it's there and, and the cache returns it and that speeds up the application performance significantly. So, what so yeah, we were talking about this the other day on Monday on theCUBE, that multiplicative effect of yes. all the IOs increasing and this is, this is a way in which you're dealing with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what we're, I'm going to flip over real quick and actually what I'm showing, we're using, um, what we're, we're emulating here is actually a, uh, a business analytics type application where you've got up to a thousand concurrent users. Uh, we're using a Swingbench tool that was actually developed by Oracle and really does a good job of testing the overall and, 
and, and, and, and stressing out the overall Oracle rack environment. And what we see here is a couple of different charts and it shows essentially the number of transactions per minute that the cluster can handle. Um, and what you see on the right side with the overall uh, the CPU, TPU, is it actually shows with cash turned off the number of transactions and then about a 4X performance increase and in, in, in the number of transactions that, that, the, uh, that the, the cluster can handle whenever you turn that cash capability on. So those valleys are the, the, when the cash, cash goes capability off, off yes. and, and the spikes are cash is turned on. When you turn it on. So we've just got a script running in the background that turns it on, turns it off, and what it's showing is over time, uh, whenever our cash is off, you know, I'm getting around 220, 320 transactions per minute. Whenever I turn it back on, you can multiply that by four. Uh, and essentially that's all you're doing is enabling cash. There's no other tuning on the database, there's no other hardware you're throwing in other than enabling that cash to be able to provide so, that capability. So the, the, the Oracle rack is, you know, for the highest end production systems, yes. I mean, it is Oracle's, you know, yes. bread and sure. butter, right? Absolutely. Now, so talk about the cache a little bit. We're talking about read and write cache and it's it's right through cache and okay. so essentially uh, you know all the hottest data on the on the sand is actually going to be cached on the server side. So what that does is that allows you to be able to access that from the the cache pool and it re reduces that uh, that re right through all, uh, back to the uh, to the sand and gives you better overall uh, productivity. So right there. through cache meaning you write to the SSD. Yes. So you said signal the old mainframe turn device end. Yeah. You, know, you, you signal the write occurs when you have it in the cache, you probably replicate it, right. uh, and then, then you trickle it asynchronously to the back end disk at some point. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, and so you know, there's there's a tremendous, you know, if you if you look at uh, just tr transactions per minute that you can get whenever you start to run this type of uh, a solution through there, you see up to five times increase in the number of transactions per minute that you can deal with, and also application response times comes down significantly, about 75% savings on your application response times, uh, which may essentially all of this means you can get more done in the same amount of time, giving you the ability to drive more revenue or cut your costs significantly. So okay, so in, in, in a lot of ways, so we've talked about this a lot, you know, here in the cube uh, and and uh, in other places, Wikibon and SiliconANGLE, getting rid of the 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 minimizing, I should say, the impact of the spinning disk right. is, is a big part of what you're doing, and you're kind of shifting the bottleneck right yes. back into closer to the CPU, right? right? So where's the bottleneck now? Is it the amount of cash? Is it the ability to destage that? That, that SSD or well, well, I mean, you know, we, what are you we, learning from that? We, we've done a tremendous amount of research on, okay, what's the, what, what, what's the average amount of, of, of hot data, I guess you call it, in a, in a storage area network, and it's about 20 to 30% of the overall database environment is hot, and so the cache sizes that you have as a part of this, this solution are uh, representative of about 25 to 30%. That's basically how you scale and, and, and determine what size cache you need. So, you know, 200 gig, 400 gig type cache, and then you pull that, you cluster that across the, 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 the nodes in your server in your server cluster and then you've got the ability to now shared cache up to you know if you've got four servers with 200 gig up to 800 gigs of cache on that side. Now what does this mean for the end customer? Always it means better application performance, but what does it mean in terms of what he or she has to do to configure their systems? Are there do they, do they need to identify tools? Is it all automated? How, what do they have to do? No, all it is is it's an HBA, and it's actually, so from, from the server perspective, it looks at this as just an HBA. It's completely transparent. It runs based on the same set, base driver set that uh, customers are accustomed to using with QLogic. There's no uh, management layer software that they have to install. Uh, it's completely transparent to the operation of the server. Uh, so essentially those I.O. requests go, they, they, they route directly through the uh, fabric cache. If the data sits in the fabric cache pool, then it will return it there. Otherwise Otherwise it goes all the way through. And this is something I can buy today? That's available today, yes sir. Great, awesome. Um, is there anything else you need to show us? Uh, I'm, I'm always cutting that demos <laughs> off. I don't want to <laughs> no, do that. No, that, that's fine. No, this just gives you a sense, and we're really just trying to show the sense of the difference in the performance that you get just by enabling that cache capability by using the Fabric Cache solution. So, so now, to talk a little bit more about sort of the uptake, you're obviously targeting this to, to your OEMs. What's been the feedback? You know, um, you're, you're shipping, are you, in, are you in production? Give yes. us the status. Great, great question. So we actually, uh, uh, we actually started shipping this, this product earlier this year, about March time frame. Uh, we've had a lot of customers who are doing uh, test and evaluation in their environments to make sure that they can really optimize it and, and it makes sense for their environment. We're now at a point now where customers are starting to roll this out. So, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, 10, 15 to 20 customers who have been doing some pretty significant uh, proof of concepts and now they're starting to roll this in. And so it's, it's, it gains a lot of attention whenever you start talking about 
maximizing the investment, they don't have to add a lot of additional hardware. So we're starting to see a lot of value there. So how, how, how is this being charged for, again, at the customer, or maybe talk about your, 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 your pricing model, just in you know, conceptual terms? Yeah, so I mean, you know, from a pricing perspective, it is, it, it's, it's much less than if you were to go buy a new a SANA array to put, array to put in your <laughs> SAN, or if you go add a new you know, uh, node in your cluster. So you know, it's, it's definitely priced at a price point below that. Obviously, there's, you know, the pricing is going to be handled through our OEM customers, right. but there's list pricing that is, uh, uh, is at a significant advantage advantage from some of the other uh, things that you would want, you may want to do to go drive this kind of performance. So that's sort of the, from, a, from an end customer's perspective, that's the benchmark is, 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 is I can uh, stave off, you know, the having to buy more, you know, giant equipment, yes. you know, complex sands, I can, I can do stuff closer to the CPU, uh, that's going to extend the life of my existing infrastructure. So it really is, a, is, a, is an asset uh, leverage play yes. in, in one part, and also it speeds up the applications, that's really the, two main value props, I guess, in improving efficiency of the system overall. Absolutely, Great. exactly. All right, David, uh, any, any last word, final advice for people, or you know, what, what do you want people to take away from No, uh, I think you know, the, the, the key is, this, we've got a product now that works with Oracle Rack, and we've proven that it has the ability to be able to give you, uh, the, the, you know, it, it maximizes the investment that you have in that, uh, in that overall environment with Oracle Rack, and, and continue to get better productivity out of that without having to make those heavy investments in, in other IT infrastructure. Excellent, or Oracle Rack, uh, real application clusters for you geeks out there. Um, uh, the, the mission critical, the most, most production oriented systems that are out there. Uh, thanks again, David, for coming on. Thanks again for having us in the booth. Absolutely, thank you. Logic is four years in a row. The Cube's been here at Oracle Open World. It's been a great run, and we're going to continue the tradition. Stay here at the Cube. We'll be right back with more day three coverage live in San Francisco. This is the Cube at Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.